let some of the leadership uh, share the different pieces that they feared and go through that. And then we'll come back and let you ask questions. So at this time, if you would mute your mics, we will allow them to bring their mics on uh, and run through the project. And then if you have a question, you can either hold up your hand and, and unmute your mic, or we can do those at the end. So first of off, I'd like to introduce uh, Linus Drew, our assistant superintendent, and she has really chaired the oversight of these committees all coming together and working. So I uh, wanna say a huge thank you to her for the hours that she's put in on this document and all that we've done. And Linus, if you would just give us a little overview uh, and then lead off to your different committee chairs. Thank you. Thank you, good evening, everybody. Um, I wanted to just first tell you the process that we've taken in regards to this return to learn plan. Um, as you know, we have been participating for weeks with, in meetings with the Oklahoma State Department of Education. Um, we've also participated as administrators with our administrator consortiums across all school districts. We have taken the 74 page document that the state put out for guidance and broken that down into things that we already do, things that we know we can do, and then things we may not be able to do, whether it be due to our large district size or financial reasons. Um, we have surveyed our staff and our families, which I will go over some of the results of those here in just a second. And we've also developed a committee made up of parents, staff, teachers, students, board members, and administrators to come up with a plan that we think is very workable for as we re-enter re school in the fall. Um, I wanted to share with you real quick, our objective for this committee was to formulate a feasible, practical, and acceptable re-entry plan that allows for a safe return to school for our students and staff. And I think the most important words in this are words that we have used often and the State Department of Education has used often, and that is feasible, practical, and acceptable. What can we, what can we really do for our staff and students? So first I want to, I'm gonna begin sharing my screen because I would like to first recognize the committee that worked so hard on this. Um, so I'm gonna go over that, let me share my screen. Okay, so this is the Deer Creek Return to Learn Committee. And we had a group of administrators who were on this committee, which, which included Renette Tippins, our superintendent, myself, Dr. Diana Jones, James Edwards, Dr. James Rose, Kelly Hinton, Jeff Johnson, Josh Pierce, Tommy Buckner, Bill Bays, Josh Critchfield, and then we had side administrators. Oh, also Adrian Turner and Jennifer Ingram are a part of our administrative team. And then we had side administrators also participate, which were Mark Phillips, Christy Van Dorn, Michelle Anderson, Johans Brown, Chris Culver, and Aaron Frizzell. We had two board members serve on this committee, as Renette spoke of earlier, Dr. Danny Barnes and Lori Bamford. Our district attorney, Laura Holmes, also served on this committee. And then we had um, Holly Sapp, who is our Director of Health and Wellness. For our parents, we had Jen Elliott, Angela Slayton, Marissa Treat, Rohit Agarwal, and I believe that's it. I wanna make sure, oh, we had Jason Zaludic. I think that's all of our parents. I'm gonna go back over my list. I just wanna make sure I don't forget anyone. And then the teachers that, we, that served on our committee were from a variety of levels and subject areas. And those teachers were Whitney Wynn, Greg Johnson, Deanna Tate, Denise Fielden, Laura Crawford, Chrissy Morgan. And I'm just kind of going through my list real quick to make sure Heather Flinton was a counselor that also served on this committee. And then I think we all thoroughly enjoyed having students on this committee. They were an absolute joy. They provided great feedback and were so brave to be on a committee with a bunch of adults. Um, those students were Hallie Hayward, Shelby Johnson, Hutch Miller, Kian Hickey, and Maya Joseph. I 
hope that I have said everyone. If I haven't, I apologize. But most importantly, I want to thank everyone. Um, we appreciated your thoughtful insight and your open and honest communication. And we could not have done this without you. Um, I want to review some of the highlights of the surveys that we sent out. We didn't ask very many questions on our staff survey initially. Um, our biggest concern was how they felt about coming back if school were, were to return as normal. And then also what they needed from us as far as additional support and help. Um, some were open-ended answers, so I've only provided a few charts regarding the staff survey here. As you can see in uh, on this first chart, um, we had about 56.7% who were comfortable with minimal or no concerns returning to school. Then we had 32% comfortable with concerns, 9.2% 9 9 who were somewhat comfortable, and then a, a small percentage that were not comfortable at all. Now what's important about this chart is that all 100% of our staff are important no matter how they feel in regards to coming back. So it was important for our committee to attempt to address each and every one and make sure that we are doing all that we can do to help our teachers feel safe in returning to school to teach our amazing kiddos. Um, the other chart I have on here is just what the teachers put that they would like additional support on. And the one with the highest amount is not a shock to us or surprise because it's our new learning platform uh, that Dr. Diana Jones will go over here in a little bit. Um, so that's definitely a, a big part that we will offer support for them. In regards to the parent survey, I wanted to go over a few of these results. Um, we stated if public health officials believe it's safe to allow in-person instruction, would you be comfortable having your student return to school this fall? You can see that 54.5%, 28.6% were comfortable with minimal concerns or some concerns. And then we had about 12.2% who were somewhat comfortable. And then we had a percentage that were not comfortable at all. Again, in our plan, we wanted to address all 100% of these families and not leave anyone out, no matter what the percentage was. Um, we wanna make sure that we can address each of their needs. Then you can see here the question of, did they intend to send their children to tra traditional on-site school this fall? And then we also asked what instructional delivery and available through Deer Creek Schools would they choose for their family? And so in this question, we kind of gave them a hint of what we felt like we were leaning to. And again, Dr. Diana Jones will go over that here in a minute. Then the ever hot topic of would, what would be your preference, preference in regards to wearing a mask. 43% um, said they would not want their child to wear a mask. We had about 23.4 said they would. And then we had 33.6 that didn't have a preference. So we're not really quite sure where those 33.6 lean towards. Do they lean towards the, I want my child to wear a mask or do they lean towards not? And then we asked um, a couple of questions about bus transportation and you can see the results there. I think it's important that you note that the data that we garnered from this survey is not clear cut in order for us to make just that absolute decision that would make everyone happy. However, I feel like we have developed a plan that has options for our families. And most importantly, those options allow all of our students to remain Deer Creek Antlers and learn from our Deer Creek staff. So I think that's the, the best part about this plan. Lastly, um, I wanted to let you know that we also plan on sending another parent survey out and staff survey out because we want to gain additional information from our stakeholders. And, and we promise to critically examine those survey results and use those in order to help guide us in future decision making. I just really wanna encourage all parents to complete those surveys uh, because they are important to us and, and they do make a difference. We are now going to, before I go on, does anybody have any questions about the survey results or the committees or the process? 
Len Linus, um, I would, I just want to say that, you know, we, I think we sent out, you said over 4,000 uh, surveys and how many, over 3,000 or 3,200 came back. I think our community uh, was, our input was excellent. Uh, and we spent the first hour or so of the, the first meeting together going over the data that you presented. So we, we took our family's input very seriously and that helped us guide us through the whole week. And uh, I, I think that's important that we're sending out another survey to get some more information, uh, but, but our community has been well represented with their input, especially in this return to learn committee. Yes, thank you. Well, at this time, I'm going to go over to our um, document and try to blow this up just a little bit for everyone. Um, I just wanna make sure that you can see it. This is a lengthy document. However, we wanted to be thorough and make sure that most importantly, the FAQs that we have at the end that we tried to think of anything and everything um, that a parent might ask and, and address that. I do, again, want you to know this is a fluid document. Um, it is subject to change as the data and the information we receive changes. Uh, and we will continue to update this document and the FAQs as we receive feedback from our staff and community. So at this time, I would like to turn it over to James Edwards to begin breaking down this plan. Okay. As we kind of keep that fluidity in, in mind that things could change, uh, we try to put together just a basic outline here for you of our plans to uh, for the fall, for the start of the school year. At the top, um, you can see that our graduation for our 2020 seniors is planned for August 1st, 2020 at 8.30 a.m. at the Deer Creek Stadium. Uh, each graduate is going to be able to invite up to four guests in order to establish a safe environment for our graduates and our family and social distance as much, much as possible. But we will have a live feed that will be available for those who cannot attend or cannot travel to um, Oklahoma. Uh, number two, uh, kind of learning opportunities. For the 2020 school year, Deer Creek families will have a choice of their learning pathway and Dr. Jones will go into depth on that in just a moment. But when uh, there are zero to low cases of COVID exists in the community, school operations will conduct as normal, and that's for traditional school. When the uh, cases uh, rise to medium to high with COVID in the community, uh, Deer Creek will move to remote learning from home. Number three is our transportation. Uh, Deer Creek plans to resume tra traditional transportation, though we uh, do highly recommend that all of our students uh, wear masks on the bus. Number four, uh, health monitoring at home. It is important that all of our families partner with us monitoring the health of your students and families. We ask that temperatures be taken on a daily basis at home, no matter um, no student with a temperature of 100 degrees or higher uh, may enter the Deer Creek facilities. So it's very important that our parents help us out with that and monitor those temperatures at home before sending those students to school. Number five is protocols at school. Deer Creek will make every effort to promote healthy practices and protocols. Physical distancing will be implemented as possible. Masks will not be required, but are highly recommended for all of our staff and our students. Deer Creek will follow county, city, and state mandates. Requirements, recommendations are subject to change. So again, it's gonna be very fluid as we go through um, our school year until we find out more about what's going on. Number six is our social emotional well-being of our students. And it's very important as we uh, we take that as just as important as their academic learning at Deer Creek. Our health and wellness department, along with our site calendar counselors, will be prepared and available to help our students and our families and our teachers. 
Uh, number seven is the cleaning and disinfecting of our schools. Uh, Deer Creek has increased its cleaning and preparation of the facilities in an effort to protect uh, our staff and students. Frequent hand washing and other healthy protocols will be implemented in practice. Efforts will be made to have hand sanitizers and hand sanitizing stations throughout the school. Upon notification of a positive COVID case in a building, a classroom and or a school will be closed and clean. During class or closure or school closure, remote learning will be implemented. And moving to where we have that opportunity to have that um, remote learning is gonna help our kids to stay on track this year. As we move to the next portion, I wanna introduce our assistant superintendent, Dr. Diana Jones. Thank you, Mr. Edwards. As our subcommittee worked to develop the learning pathways for our Deer Creek um, antlers, it was important for us to not lose sight that this is one of the most important decisions that we make um, in keeping our student learning in the forefront. That, that's why we're here. And so we know that we don't have control over um, the pandemic or, or some things, but what we do have control over is helping our students learn. And so we found three pathways that we would like to share with you that we believe that all of our Deer Creek students can have a um, choice that works best for the student and their families. Our first option is traditional um, and remote learning. We felt very strongly in uh, our wording there that we wanted that traditional thought, but we knew that it was not going to be a normal um, traditional uh, experience, it was going to be a new normal. But with coupled with that, we have remote learning. And so we know that whenever possible, we will be in school with our teachers and our students learning in a typical fashion. Um, along with that though, we know that um, just from last spring, that there are going to be times based upon different circumstances that our students will have to be out of the classroom or out of the school building. But we still wanted to continue their learning opportunity. And um, if you could move it up just a little bit, thank you. Um, we wanted to make sure that people understood if they chose um, what we're saying traditional learning, that was coupled with remote learning. Whether you're in school or you have to be home for a snow day or um, because of COVID, we will still be learning and we will provide you with the resources and that learning will be new learning. It was also important for us to um, distinguish what we will have to do next year compared to what we did in the spring. In the spring, it was not new learning, it was review. So moving forward, we will always be presenting new knowledge to our students to make sure that all standards are covered. Uh, the second two options are blended and full virtual. Um, the um, supplemental online curriculum law, um, says that we have to provide as a district the opportunity for students to take virtual classrooms, but still be a part of uh, the district and still have access to um, other class classes in such as sports or activities um, such as band, um, choir, stuco. Um, they might want to come um, on campus for an advanced placement course. Um, and so that option blended, if you don't mind moving it up a little on the screen, is um, what that means, that we are abiding by the law. We knew about this and we had been planning for that and um, focusing on the Deer Creek Academy that Mr. Stephen Buck will be the principal for. So that is for students in grades seven through 12. And so they would work through the Deer Creek Academy with Mr. Buck and his team for their virtual courses, but also be a part of the um, middle school or high school and attending courses there. We would use uh, Edmentum, our virtual learning platform. It's a content management, which is basically uh, for their virtual classes where they will get 
um, their learning content. And then they will also um, be in class, either at the high school or the middle school for specific courses. And so they would start with an application through the Deer Creek Academy and then go from there. There is um, some eligibility requirements for that and um, an intake process for both blended and virtual to make sure that this is a good option for students. Then full virtual is just exactly um, what it says. It is an opportunity for students to still be a Deer Creek Antler and but take their courses virtually. Each of these options, blended and full virtual, um, require a semester commitment. And we want to make sure that we are providing supports and plan for that. Um, each of those will have um, access to the Deer Creek Academy staff in making sure that they are staying on track with their virtual learning. And certainly they'll have that same opportunity in the blended portion at on site with the, um, the, the staffs at those sites. If um, the, just to make a, a comment here, we do have a, some bullet points on blended and full virtual regarding um, that there could be a fee incurred. Um, right now, the law says if we have a course, then we are to provide that virtually. If we do not have a course in our course description guide and we do not provide that, we would have to pay Edmentum for their a staff member and their content. And so that would um, cost money and we would incur that fee um, and could charge the students for that. Um, so that's what that means. We will also um, give more information on that in the FAQs if people have questions. There are links that straight take them straight to the um, eligibility survey and application, and then give them a little bit more information about Deer Creek Academy. We did make some comments here at the bottom in the white area to make sure that when we were talking about remote learning, as I mentioned previously, that could mean if we were out for a flood day, if we were out for a snow day, if we were out for a pandemic, or um, as we had electricity out in one school this year. So our students would still have access to their learning and we would not have students falling behind um, in their learning path um, as we did in the spring. And then the icons, you can click on the icons below and they are live links straight to a short video of the Canvas Learning Center, um, the Can Canvas um, learning management system. And what that means is we, um, we talked a little bit about this last month, but Canvas is um, a portal, if you will, a, lear a learning management system where teachers and students um, can meet in the middle, if you will. They will house their assignments. They will see their grades. They will be able to upload videos. And so new learning and will be consistent all assignments across the district will be housed in the same place. So um, we will be providing more detailed information about where those um, items are and what that looks like. And our teacher leaders, we have 40 teacher leaders um, from represented from each campus that will be helping us implement this within their districts. And so they, on July 7th and 8th, will be making some of these decisions. And then we'll be providing tr more training for our teachers following that through for the Canvas learning management system. Edmentum is the content management system, which means that's um, the program that the students will use to learn if they are in virtual classes. It houses curriculum as well. And then those students will be monitored by Deer Creek teachers in their progress and having meetings and testing with those Deer Creek teachers. So they're still, it was important to us to still have that um, student and um, teacher uh, relationship building. And then the Deer Creek Academy we've been working on for the last uh, little over a year now. And um, so that link right there will take you to the webpage. I will turn it over back to Mr. Rue so she can go over the FAQs. Thank you, Dr. Jones. 
Um, we have quite a few FAQs. I won't read over all of them, but I do want to point out a few things. We've taken the time to really give an explanation of what blended learning is, what virtual learning is, um, what Canvas and Admentum are. Um, we've asked, you know, do I declare, do I have to declare which pathway I want my children to participate in? We have determined that everyone will automatically be a part of the traditional pathway until they complete the process, the intake process and uh, application and eligibility for blended or virtual. So we aren't gonna need everyone to declare for us uh, the pathway they wanna take, just those that uh, want to go away from the traditional and try virtual or blended. We have how they could enroll. Um, Dr. Jones talked about certain fees that could occur if necessary. Um, transportation regards to virtual or blended learning. Uh, when will we use remote learning? Uh, we just touched on that. Um, will all, all athletics electives and fine arts classes continue to be offered? Uh, right now, they are, they will be continued to be offered. Um, and we will just gauge that depending on the level of community spread. Will the district calendar change for, the, for 2021? Um, at this time, we don't feel that our beginning or end dates will change. Um, however, we, we may come to the Board of Education next month and, and ask for days to be switched out from traditional to remote um, periodically so that our students can practice remote learning and our teachers can practice remote learning just in case um, there might be a time where we're out for a longer period. We want to make sure that our, our staff and students can be successful with our remote, remote learning. We talk about where we will get our information from. Um, we The big question came up of why will we not be taking temperatures when students are entering the school? And I think it's important to know that um, although that is a process you see a lot of places for schools, it is not the first contact for most children. Um, so it might be a mute point. Um, a lot of their first contacts could be either at the bus stop or before school at their activities that they choose to participate in that occur before school. It could be in the carpool that they're riding in. Um, it could be at their daycare that they go to before school. So entering the school building is not the majority of our students' first contact. And so it would not be something that we could necessarily catch. And also the research, research shows that some, some students and adults can be asymptomatic and, and not exhibit a fever. Uh, but still possibly uh, be positive for COVID. And we do talk about masks right now. We are, are recommending them and we, and we tell you why and where we're recommending them. We recommend them also in highly populated areas such as a gymnasium or um, a cafeteria or a hallway. Uh, so right at this point, we aren't saying that they are required, but again, everything is gonna be dependent upon community spread and additional data and information that we, that we receive. A big thing we put in here is how can I help the school as a parent? And we hear often from our parents, we have such great community support and our parents often ask us this question, how can we help? And so we've just put a few things in there, um, donations of items that we know we're gonna use a lot of. Um, the biggest thing I think that we would ask from parents is to really self-regulate at home temperature and, and symptoms. And we are taking out all incentives for attendance, meaning no awards for perfect attendance. Um, I know the high school is gonna review the exemption policy. And the reason we are doing this is we do not want any family or student to feel they have to come to school sick because it may help them do or get something later. So we are going to eliminate as much as possible in regards to attendance incentives so that parents feel good about keeping their child home and students feel okay about missing school and just learn, you know, remote learning from home when maybe they're not feeling well. 
Um, it is important to also note that if a student does is sick at home, um, they can remote learn that day and can be counted for positive attendance. And so uh, if they complete their assignments during the allotted time. So I think that's a big plus for our families and our students to encourage them truly to stay home if they're not feeling well. Um, we talk about preparing your child at home. If you have devices or potentially might need to get a device to help with remote learning, we have some suggestions on this document as well. Um, and we just ask that you work with the school site and the district administration and the teachers and just communicate openly with us. We want to, we want to hear from you. We want to talk to you. Um, and we want to be able to assist in answering any concerns or questions. And then there will be a different visitor process in regards to entering buildings and a check-in, check-out process that won't look normal like we have done in the past. And so we just ask that um, you be patient uh, with us as we develop that and help decrease the traffic of adults possibly entering our, our facilities. Um, we have in here some information on graduation tickets also additional practices uh, to be implemented. And then, like I said, just some recommendations on devices. Uh, again, this return to learn plan and the FAQs will be updated as more information is available. It is subject to change. As you know, this the information we get daily is changing. So um, we would be remiss to not pay attention to the information out there as well and, and stay up with it to keep our students and our staff safe. So at this time, I've tried to touch on the majority of everything, but are there any questions that Superintendent Tippins or Dr. Jones or Mr. Edwards or I could answer for anyone? I think what I would like to stress is this is just the beginning. Um, it's definitely our guidance for where we think we are headed at the same time. Uh, we will continue to receive guidance from the State Department of Education, the State Department of Health, the CDC. Uh, there's a tremendous amount or a large number of people that continue to feed us information on a weekly basis. The State Department's guidance originally was a very small two or three page FAQ. It's now 74 pages. Our hope is not to ever bombard you with 74 pages, but to keep it concise where it's easily looked at and read, but know that that has been updated on a weekly basis for us. And when they make updates, we turn around and we will review this document. Uh, it is highly likely the majority will be answered through FAQ. So we probably will add a few, but our goal is to keep it simple and concise, uh, but flexible uh, as things change in our community. So board members, are there any other questions that we might answer for you at this time? Our goal is to share this with our, our community. Uh, again, we're going to turn around and survey both staff and our um, parents in our community again, and then we'll come back and revisit. So I'm sure this is something that as we hit July and August, we'll come back to you with any changes that we might have on that. But it begins to give parents an idea of the direction that we're headed. It certainly lets them know academically some opportunities that we have not had in the past, both in blended and virtual learning. And we're very excited about those. So our goal was to get some of that information out where parents could begin to think about what best fits each child in their family. And it may not be the same for all children. Likely it will not be. Um, I was sharing with one of my own that I believe they're gonna have three different forms of learning with three children uh, in three of my grandchildren. So, um, and the, the other one, the fourth one, they haven't decided yet. So we just want to get something out there quickly so parents can begin to especially look at blended learning, virtual learning, traditional with remote, um, and also in hopes that if they are looking for something to purchase for their children, uh, that they might consider a personal device that their child could bring with them 
they're again keeping contamination to a minimum uh, if they have their own device and work from their own device. We will have devices available uh, for checkout, uh, but there is a more a greater likelihood of cross contamination uh, from our devices, just even when we're wiping them down. So um, just to get some ideas out there for our families and begin to get this thought going forward. And then I have a couple of comments. First, I think that anybody watching this on YouTube, you have to realize, and I think you know how hard our administration has worked before, during and after this to to make a basically a new school year. I mean, we six months ago, we knew a little about this pandemic. We're shut down in March. They have to do some type of learning. And then in the several short months, we've come up with this, which I think to your credit and your staff, it's absolutely amazing. And um, you have you guys have done such a great job of, of getting our getting a plan together to make sure that we're in school and our kids are in school and our kids are engaged in learning. It's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible. The second comment is to the, both the subcommittees who, who came together and especially the subcommittee on, on the guidelines for the COVID and coming back, you know, my good friend Clark Fraley says, you know, we're heavy on opinion and light on facts and they had to come together and peel away these layers of their opinions and how they felt about COVID and we all address the facts and the research. And I think we've come up with a template that should be the envy of the state. And I really think a lot of schools will look at what we're doing and say, you know, well, you know, we don't need math. The research can say maybe kids in elementary don't need math because it's just not in the research. And I think it's very hard with all the stuff that's been on Facebook and everything that we're all infants in learning about this virus. And it's been very difficult to pull through the research and find out just what is credible and what is not. And I think this committee just did a fantastic job of making this a flexible document that we can change as things change in our committee and that change in our community. And I just have to give them the, the, the more kudos and, and ever, especially our parents and, and our little students that, that really, our students were spot on in a lot of their comments and I really appreciated having them on the committee. So thanks to both groups on, on doing a great job. I would have to echo your kudos to our students and to our parents. I think they were all very upfront and honest. Uh, the students really brought a lot of light and wisdom to what they thought was needed to be done and gave us some suggestions that you see in this document. So they were very, very important to our committee. Uh, I also want to say that there were some background people that aren't reflected here. Uh, in particular, our Lead and Learn team were all involved in this process and all involved in that page of what does it look like for blended, what does it look like for virtual. Um, they've been working around the clock since the second week of March on what distance learning looks like and now what does blended learning and virtual learning and a whole different system look like. Um, to our teachers who are, have volunteered, um, to come and learn and be teacher leaders and mentor the other teachers. Their work begins early July, and then it's going to continue throughout July and all of August so that teachers can come in and become more and more familiar with Canvas and with Edmentum. Uh, when, when it's unfamiliar to you, you need to know it was also very unfamiliar to our staff until just a short time ago and they were very involved in that process of selecting that, but it's a huge undertaking by every teacher and every administrators in the district. So uh, I would have to say a huge shout out to every person, every employee in the district uh, for their work that they have done and their willingness to learn something that is new and different. Um, I tell people it's very scary because so much has come on so fast. It's also very exciting because for the first time, public education is getting to embrace many of the opportunities that were afforded to uh, private school and to uh, our charter schools and to our online schools. So while it is a little frightening to be thrown in here this quickly, it's also a very exciting time for public education. And I have no doubt that Deer Creek will do it extremely well. And like you, I want to say thank you, especially to the people that have been working the past couple of weeks 
on this particular document. And Lennis, I want to thank you for your leadership in this and, and the countless hours. Lennis is one who will come up with a dozen questions for us to think again about. And, and you've done a great job in leading us in that way. So thank you for that. Thank you to everyone that's presented tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank Any you. further questions from the board? Okay, then um, we will go forward with sharing this with our families uh, and then we will be sending out new surveys to try to gather more input. So I'm sure in July, uh, we will have some changes in our information for you at that time. So- uh, I do have one question. Yes. Uh, first of all, I wanna echo uh, Danny's sentiments of I appreciate the effort. Um, this, this is super clear. Um, I think parents will really appreciate this information. Uh, two questions I have is one, will the state recognize virtual attendance for our funding? And then two, on the option two blended on the purple, um, it states clearly the seven through 12 grades. And then all, I just don't, I could see how somebody might question like where do pre-K and sixth graders fit in this? Um, what are their options? So I didn't know if we needed to add grades to the for full virtual or... Um, uh, full virtual is pre-K through 12. And okay. that is stated in the FAQs. Okay, um, I'm, a, okay I'm sorry, I'm, because I missed they come this. in and out. Um, and so the, the um, classes are more sectioned off into you know 45 to 50 minutes that's and they have activities that they might want to participate in such as um, basketball or football or um, I'm trying to think of something else <laughs> um, sh um, choir or something like that that they might want to participate in okay that's only for blended 7 through 12 full virtuals offered pre-k through 12. okay and it was a great question on funding. Uh, we'd like to answer that. We have asked several times very clearly on their state department calls and every time they have said that we, virtual days or remote days will count just like they do for the other schools that they've counted for before. So um, they have said numerous times that attendance remotely, as long as we can validate that the student work has been completed uh, in a timely fashion, in a manner that we will address through policy, um, that those count as virtual days and they will count towards our attendance and our funding. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. OSSBA um, and then our school attorney is also working with us on um, helping us with those policies. Mr. Dennis, I think we're back to you. All right, thank you, Renette. <clears throat> uh, so we'll go ahead and continue on with our agenda this evening. Our next item will be the business items. Uh, the first business item is the school board policy DJ purchasing procedures amended. Uh, policy DJ, the amendments on there just adds word wording to more clearly outline our purchasing procedures. It also adds word, wording that will allow us to more clearly outline that we can take the state bids, best bids, and other things that are required by law, or not required by law, but allowed by law. So it's just more of a uh, kind of cleaning up the policy, so to speak. Okay, did, does anybody, any, any other board members have any questions or additional discussion? about this policy change? If not, do we have a motion to approve? Motion to approve. Second. Barnes? Yes. Keene? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Neves, yes. Lay? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. All right, our next business item is the discussion and possible vote to approve Oklahoma School Assurance Group for workers' compensation insurance for the 2020-2021 school year. Uh, OSAG 
uh, has been the group we've used for several years and they came in um, gave us another good quote this year for this and I'd just like to recommend them for the upcoming school year i make a motion to accept the workman's compensation quote for OSAG. I'll second that. Keen. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Needs. Yes. Lay. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Motion carries five zero. Okay, item three is the discussion and possible vote to approve property casualty insurance for the 2021, 20, pardon me, 2020, 2021 school year. Uh, we, we took some, uh, we had some quotes come in for our property and casualty this year. Um, after reviewing and comparing the policies as well as the financial risks of the groups, and the stability of the companies, it is a condition to approve Oklahoma Schools Insurance Company or group, or also known as OSIG, to provide the property and casualty insurance for this coming year. Do you have any questions or further discussion regarding this? I'll make a motion to accept. If not, do we have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. Second. Keen. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Neves. Yes. Lay. Yes. Motion carries five zero. Item number four this evening is uh, the board to consider and take possible action in the absence of the president and or clerk to appoint an acting president and or acting clerk for the school district to execute any and all documents pertaining to setting the maturities, date, time, and place of the bond sale. It's uh, something routine in the last few years, and this is just going to make sure that we can um, Take care of our bond sales that we have each year for the lease agreements. Okay, and this will be held in August after we have uh, made our change in board president and board clerk. So when nominating someone else, it needs to be someone other than Dr. Keene or someone other than Kelly Lay. Do we have a nomination? Do we have a motion to approve? Or, so, Renette, do you do you make those nominations now, or is it at the time we when the meeting's to, scheduled if someone doesn't show up? We need to nominate an acting president and an acting clerk who will take care of that if someone cannot show up. At this time, it looks like everyone will be able to attend. Um, vice president, which will be Andy, here, that and Kelly will be the clerk. Is that correct? Kelly will already be the clerk. Kelly's and I, I nominate Andy Needs and Danny Barnes. Hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be deputy. So. So we have Andy Neves to be nominated as the acting president and Danny Barnes as the acting clerk. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, so who nom who who made the motion? Kelly? Kelly did. And then who Kelly seconded? Kelly did. Mike. I seconded it. All right, sorry, I missed that part. Okay, Lay. Yes. Keen. Yes. Dennis? Yes. Neves, yes. Barnes? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Okay, item number five. Uh, the board will consider take action on a resolution determining the maturities of and setting a date, time and place for the sale 
of the $16,600,000 taxable general obligation combined purpose bonds of this school district and designating bond council for the issuance of bonds. This is where we just need to set a date. I believe it's August 4th, 5th, or 6th. Uh, These are available. In surveying the board, August 4th is a date that appears to work for everyone. At noon. That at noon? That's at noon. Noon, okay. Is there anyone that that does not work for at this time? And I did check with Lori Bamford and she felt like that would work for her as well. Make a motion to accept that time and date for the bond purchase issuance. Are you through? <laughs> I'll second. Whatever it is, yeah. Keen. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Dennis? Yes. Need yes, Lay? Yes. Motion carries 5 0. Okay, item six this evening is the discussion and possible vote to approve amendment number 11, Grove Valley Elementary Classroom Edition and Early Flooring Package to guarantee maximum price contract for construction management services. Expenditures are to be paid from the 2016 bond fund. Uh, is this an upcoming project that we're, we've been able to add by uh, being able to save some funds from our previous uh, projects. And I have Corey here from CMS Willowbrook and Jeff Johnson here also, if you have any questions for them. Hey, I just want to say good evening. It's it's nice seeing everybody. It's been a while. It's good to see you. We had we had a good turnout. We had over a hundred bids. I think you, if you took the time to count them all up, but they're shown there on our GMP or amendment. Um, so it was a good turnout. Um, pleased with all the bids and um, all the low bidders. Um, we called, discussed um, their scope of works, and there was no dis discrepancies that we found. So um, all of the low bidders is who we are recommending. Um, so there wasn't, you know, a situation where we had to uh, pass up the, you know, low bidder for, for whatever the case might be. Um, so that's good. But obviously we held the bid. It was last Tuesday. Um, open bid just as we're required um, part of title 61 um, but overall had a good bid we did not receive bids on glass and um, on glazing and uh, rough carpentry glazing has always been one that it, I don't know why um, it just seems like they're very busy and sometimes it's hard to get a bid from and um, what we are recommending just carrying allowance it's it's under 50,000 that we were estimating. So as, as long as the board approves this GMP and um, with it being under 50,000, we'll go out and try to get at least three quotes, competitive quotes, and um, and just take the, the uh, low quote. And then on rough carpentry, it is over 50,000, but it applies the same as long as you approve that allowance amount within this GMP. Tomorrow, we'll just go right back out to bid with that bid package and we'll just work a little harder getting some bidders and um, we'll just open up bids just like we did last Tuesday. And I want to, I want to thank Corey and, and CMS. They, they, they've done well and really worked hard to get us a lot of bids, which uh, increased the competition and gets our prices for our projects. And, Again, that's that's part of the reason that we're able to do these extra projects, and this is a huge project to be able to just have add on to the end. Um, uh, I believe it's twelve classrooms that we're going to be able to add on. So. Yeah, that's excellent. 
All right, do we have any other questions or additional discussion regarding this, this item? If not, do we have a motion to approve the amendment number 11? I'll make a motion to approve amendment 11. Second. Keen. Yes. Clay. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Neves. Yes. Barnes. Yes. Motion carries five zero. Okay, hey, item E on the agenda is executive session. The Board of Education will consider and may vote to convene an executive session. Do you have any desire for that this evening? No? All right, so we'll move on down the agenda to item H, which is the discussion and possible vote on the superintendent's recommendation concerning employment as listed on the personnel schedule. Do you have any, any questions regarding those individuals or those recommendations on the personnel schedule? If not, do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve personnel schedule as submitted. I'll second. Keen? Yes. Dennis? Yes. Neves, yes. Lay? Yes. Barnes? Yes. Motion carries 5-0. Hey, then our <clears throat> our final uh, item this evening is the adjournment. I move for adjournment of hopefully the last virtual meeting. I'm so missing the socio psycho contact with all the rest of you great people. So move for adjournment. Emphatically second. Uh, <laughs> Barnes. Yes. Way. Yes. Dennis. Yes. Keen? Yes. Neves, yes. Motion carries 5 0. The time is 7 29. Okay. Thank Thanks, you very guys. much, everybody. Thank you Thank all. You. Thank you all. Catherine, I'll call you.